Welcome back to another episode from Checking from Behind You Beauties. I'm Zach, as always, joined by my co-host Preston. We have a very fun episode for you guys today because we are moving on with our previews to the Metropolitan Division. Honestly, this division might be the best division in hockey. There, I, I do disagree with I that disagree, already. Yeah. You really, <laughs> what division do you think is Atlantic? Atlantic. Yeah. It's a toss-up, but the Metro Division has. I think the Metro is very top-heavy. The Metro is top-heavy, but you also have a lot of middling teams that could make the playoffs. Now, some will say the Atlantic Division. You have seven teams that can make the playoffs. I think you still have that case for the Metropolitan Division. Um, but I do, I mean, you have what? The Rangers, the Devils, the Hurricanes, and then you have the Islanders, you have the Pittsburgh Penguins, you have the Flyers, you have the Capitals. Is there any team you, wouldn't, you would take out of that list? I'd probably take Philadelphia out. Really? Yeah, and Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh, yeah, too. I have Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh finishing over Philly. I, think, I mean, they're better than Philly, but I don't think they're a playoff team. I think the Penguins can somehow sneak in if Crosby goes nuclear. That's literally the only way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're going to start off here with the Carolina Hurricanes. Their record last season was 52-23-7 for 111 points. They finished second in the Metro Division. And their key additions this offseason are William Carrier, Sean Walker, Tyson Joe, Shane Gossesbear, and Jack Roslevic. Their key subtractions are Brad Pesci, Brady Shea, T... Tivu Teravainen, Tevu, Teravainen, Stefan Nosen. I probably butchered that too. And Auntie Ranta. This team, you might look at their subtraction and be like, there are some key. Like when we say key subtractions, I mean key subtractions I for think, the Carolina Hurricanes. They I lost some valuable big, pieces. I think their biggest loss is probably Brett Pesci. It might not even be close. Although Brady Shea, too, Brady Shea. Is up I there. mean, those are two really, really good defensemen, really dependable defensemen. They can play log a lot of big minutes. I mean, it was just a matter of, I, I don't think the Hurricanes could really afford to give them the money they wanted for a long-term deal. Yeah. And, you know, they, got, they had other guys they had to pay. Like, um, Seth Jarvis just got a big contract. Um, what's his Natchez. name? Natchez. Natchez, you know, he wanted the trade. He ended up signing a two-year deal. You, you got to find money to keep these guys around. Which I think uh, both of those deals were great. I love the Seth Jarvis deal, though. It was yeah, no, it was beautiful. a no-brainer for Seth Jarvis to be a long-term deal. Yeah, and they just one made sense for Martin Nature to do it. I think the Hurricanes agreed to that just to get him under contract because that's gonna, I believe it's going to take him into his first UFA year, yeah, and he can so make a decision there. Yeah, then. I mean, he'll probably walk. Yeah. Unless, like, Something he, drives the cap. Yeah, so because I don't think the Hurricanes would give him a long-term contract. But no. anyway, I do think this team is still one of the best teams one of the better teams in the league, arguably one of the best teams in this division. I still think it's going to be them and the Rangers fighting for the crown of the Metropolitan Division. Did they get a little worse? Possibly. I really like um, William Carey. He's going to be a really good bottom six addition of their team, really physical player. I think he'll really mesh well with that hurricane style of hockey. Uh, Sean Walker, underrated ad in my opinion. He can play in the middle pair, bottom pair. Maybe even like he, he can do a lot of different things for them. It doesn't negate the loss of Brest Pesci and Brady Shea, but they still have Brent Burns, and um, they added Shane Gossespierre as well, who's a pure offensive defenseman. He's probably going to be on like a power play two unit. Um, Roslovic's another good bottom six addition, and Tyson Jones is just like an extra body. It's more so, like, like a, in and out of the lineup. like a 13th forward. I can't, I can't see him playing that much. I, even though they lost a lot, I felt like they still did a good job in filling those needs to an extent. The biggest now, thing they did this offseason was keeping uh, Rob Bendemore locked up they, they they got him signed to that extension as a coach there were some concerns that because they didn't get to the eastern conference finals that they would let him go why would they let him go first off no, i mean no sense yeah i mean th those rumors going around about because i remember when it came out i maybe it was during the hurricanes playoff run where they were pretty much ready to do the contract extension or re-sign him excuse me but all he needed to do was bring in the assistance and figure out who were his his assistants were going to be and then something came out, correct me if I'm wrong, but something came out that the Hurricanes were still iffy on bringing him back. At some point, there was some report, whether it was before or after, that it was an announced that he was going to re-sign with the Hurricanes, um, which was very odd to me. Either way, though, they do bring him back on a nice little deal. I do think that was the only play for them, the smartest play that they could have done. Their defense real quick. Yeah. I just want to see their defensive pairs. Uh, yeah, just live, and that's the guy I was forgetting about. Yeah, they, they still have Dimitri Underrated Orlov. defenseman. So, yeah, I think their bottom pair, like last year with their defense, just getting back to that, like they, they probably had one of the best defensive boards. Mm -hmm. like up there with like a team like Boston or something like that. You know, Slavin, Burns. You know, Burns is 
rejuvenate his career since he got to Carolina. I think it was when he was in uh, in San Jose those last couple of years with uh, Eric Carlson. They were asking. They they had two of the kind of the same players with Burns and Carlson, two puck moving offensive defensemen, quarterback for the power play. He goes to Carolina and he is their power play quarterback. Slavin, I think he's one of the more underrated defensemen in the league. I know he gets a little bit more love now, but he can just do everything you need him to do. Now, I really like second pair Orlov and Walker's good. Uh, Chatfield, no, don't know a lot about him. I'm he's he's a young, good third. Player. Yeah, he's he's a good third pairing guy for them. He has been the last couple seasons. I do like Chatfield too. He's filled in his role very uh very well. And again, like you lose Pesci and Shea, but you fill it in great. You bring in Gossespierre. You bring in Sean Walker. You still have Orlov, who is a good top four defenseman for you. And your top line is a, a pretty. Yeah, just looking at this decor, it makes sense why they probably could have tried to keep. Either Pesci or Shea. I mean, I don't think they were going to keep Shea with the contract he got mm-hmm. from the Predators. It was kind of insane. Um, but yeah, uh, Pesci got paid pretty well by the Devils as well. Yeah, he did. I so. mean, I, I like I can't fathom losing Pesci to a division rival, but at the same time, like if you're a little bit cap strapped, like you can bring in a guy like Walker and Grasses Bear who can contribute to the lineup and might not be a more of a household name, but they can still play good hockey for you and they don't need guys the defensemen now that can put up points that's what you have burns for a slavin's a great two-way guy you have orlov who can be a puck moving defenseman when you ask him to and even a sean walker who isn't known to be an offensive type of guy but he can still provide some offense if you need him to and even shane goss in the past has been shown to be a puck moving defenseman oh, man, on a top that's pair what he is though yeah he's a pure offensive. so defenseman. like you you already have a bunch of them like I get having Pesci and um, Shea was great, but a lot of people are acting like the Hurricanes got so much worse. They haven't gotten that worse. I, like, I mean, when you lose two top end defensemen like that, yeah, you're gonna get your yeah. paper. You're gonna be worse. But I'm confident in the system that this team plays for them to be fine. It might, it might show a little bit here and there. Maybe the, especially with that bottom pair, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't know if these would the, be the pairs they roll out day one. I know these are just mock pairs on the daily face-off. So, like Shane Goss is spare. I wouldn't really put him out there in any defensive situation. No. My my biggest question mark for this team is goaltending, though. Um, so, they move on from Ranta, who's kind of up and down as a, a backup. Freddie Anderson missed almost all of last season with blood clots. Thankfully, he was able to come back. I thought he played like a stud when he did come back. Um this team just can't seem to get it done in the playoffs when it really matters. But, you know, Frederick Anderson has been so up and down with Carolina. He'll have phases where he's like, like, it looks like a top five goal in the league. And then he'll have phases where you don't feel comfortable playing him. You know, and Kachikov, I probably said that awful. He's, he's a good younger goalie. And they're probably going to, I think, I see this being more of a 1A, 1B type situation instead of Ant Freddy, like, Steal it, like playing like 50, 60 games. I, th- I could see them both kind of splitting the season, maybe riding the hotter hand. You know, Frederick Anderson goes on like a three or four game streak where he's playing really hot. Like, oh, we're going to play him until he's not hot anymore. I, I don't want to say I'm not comfortable with the goaltending because I think it's better than a lot of goaltending tandems in the league, but you definitely have seen better out of Carolina. Fred, Freddie Anderson, we, he's shown it at most of last season, at least through the regular season. He can still put up really good numbers, close to elite mm-hmm. numbers while they were elite numbers. Um, and that that's impressive oh, too. The last he, quarter of the season when he came back, I think he had like four or five shutouts. He was playing. He lost like he, two games. He I had think. he had a stretch. I think his first like ten games, he, he had lose. one loss, yeah. and he yeah. had like a nine thirty save percent or something close to that. Impressive stuff, especially coming the, back. The after. problem with the Hurricanes is though they they can't score in the playoffs. Like that's been what that's what. But they've also listen. Like the Hurricanes, they've run into Igor Sisterkin. They've okay. run into Sergei Bobrovsky. Okay. They've run into Jeremy Swayman. If you want to prove that you're a top team in the league, you have to be able to overcome Andre Vasilevsky. Like, I, I get that. And I, I've been on the Hurricanes train and wagon forever. You have to, at some point, defeat the, um, the elite goaltenders. But the one, thing in com- the one thing that they don't have in common between these teams that usually make runs and the Hurricanes is that elite goaltender. Like, I'm- Frederick Anderson can be elite, but he's not an elite goaltender, if that makes any well, sense. My, my problem with the Hurricanes is last year, I thought for the most part in that second round series against the Rangers, they were the better team. Mm-hmm, mm. They ran into a very hot goalie in Shesterkin, yes. and I thought Anderson played well enough for them to win. They just couldn't score. They- Igor Shesterkin was the Rangers in that series. Uh, like, the Hurricanes should have won in five or six games. 
Uh, I think it still would have gone six or seven. I think if the the Hurricanes didn't end up forcing a game seven, they would have won the series. Dude, I like by the I I kind of agree with you. I mean, by the time the Rangers got against the Florida Panthers, the Rangers were completely gassed. I mean, granted they were being outplayed by Carolina the entire yeah, series, but, but I, the Rangers kind of like... ran into that same issue where they weren't really scoring as well. But you know, the Hurricanes. This is like the third year in a row this has happened to them where they shit the bed when it matters the most. And they can't keep it's, going. Like, I, I don't know how many more free passes you're going to get. Like, it sucks, too, because, like, you mentioned they outplayed their Rangers and the They outplayed the, sec- the, the Panthers for most of the conference final a couple years ago, too. You I remember to, game one, it went to, like, three overtimes. Like, Bobrovsky played out of his mind. But you have to be able to overcome that's, that. That's what I'm saying is, like, yes, you need to overcome it. But the Hurricanes, I think the one thing that's going to hold them back is that elite goaltender that can steal them a game because or well, steal them a series. Igor has stolen series. Swayman has stolen series. Bobrovsky, Vasilevsky. With, like, we, we've seen outliers where the Avalanche won with Darcy Kemper in 2022, but Kemper played out of his mind in that, that playoff run, too. That was ridiculous. Ex- exactly. So, like, in order to win a Stanley Cup in this day and age, I think you just need to have an elite goaltender. Um, speaking of playoffs, the Hurricanes, are they a playoff team? Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they. Yes, they. Are, they should be a playoff team. If not, Rod Brendamore is getting fired. I know he just signed that <laughs> if extension. If not, is a crazy statement. All right, moving on here to the Columbus Blue Jackets. So their record last season was twenty-seven, forty-three, and twelve. They finished eighth in the Metro Division. Their key additions are Sean Monahan and Jordan Harris. Their key subtractions are Patrick Laine and Adam Boquist. This team is going to go through a rough stretch. Um, as we all know, unfortunately, they lost Johnny Goudreau. However, though, that's not changing my stance on where the Blue Jackets are going to finish because I still think they were eighth in the Metro beforehand. I still think they're eighth in the Metro after. And even, like, the record-wise doesn't really change much because, like, you still added a guy like Sean Monaghan. Like, sure, you lose a guy like Patrick Liney, but he really wasn't on the ice that much when I he think was they, with they, you. I think they just needed to move on. You got a decent defenseman in Jordan Harris as mm-hmm. a return for him. So I don't think you do too bad with that trade. I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, you know, the, the whole Johnny Gaudreau situation is super tragic and very sad. But I still think they were going to be get bad with him. Like, they were not going to be a great team. I, I have a really tough time seeing this team really do much of anything this year. You know, they were already one of the, the weaker teams in the league, in my opinion. They're a really young team. Still rebuilding that roster, you know, after Panera and Bobrovsky left in free agency. You know, just to be able to, you know, you lose one of your best players. Yeah. Like, like in a horrible, horrible situation. I, it's going to be really tough for them. Just, I think those first couple months of the season, just, you know, getting over that. Like, it, it's really hard just to go out there and just play. The mental hump they're going to have to go through is going to be nuts. It's going to be really tough. Like, day one of training camp, you show up, you go to the locker room, he's not there. That's going to, like, you have a leader, you have a brother, you have a teammate, you have a... Well, that, I think that's when he's going to really set in, is, like, he's really not coming back. And, you know, this team had to deal with tragedy a few years ago. I, I just... I, even, I, I don't see them really overcoming it. I, they, they will probably be the... I'm picking them probably be last place in the NHL. And it's not like sure they're gonna be they're gonna be bad with or without them, but it's gonna be they're gonna they're gonna be even worse. Their play is gonna take a hit, is because and it's all, all maybe, a mental. Maybe it thing. could be the opposite. Maybe they come to camp determined they have a really great camp. They start off the season really strong because they're playing hard for Johnny. That you know, could we, be a thing. We too. could be completely wrong, but regardless of what happens, I still expect this team to be a bottom five team in the league. Unfortunately. Lottery pick, like if they came in last place, it wouldn't surprise me. Although the they slightest. will be getting, I believe the first overall pick in the this upcoming draft is going to be Hagen's, and I then know, the really and then the one that. after is going to be McKenna, which is Gavin McKenna, which by the way is kind of Bedard's cousin. That that's besides the point. But I mean, if they somehow get the first overall pick, they're going to get a great player in Hagen's and. Yeah, moving on I, from... I still think they're like moving in the right direction. They're going to take I another mean, they're, step. They're getting top five draft picks almost every year. Eventually, like they're going to start coming into the NHL. They still have to find a long-term solution in goaltending. I don't think Elvis Murphy Lincoln is a long-term starter. No. Um, you know, it's a really young team. They've they're, they're got to find their identity again. Mm-hmm. they got to overcome a really tragic loss this it's going to be a rough year for Blue Jackets fans. I am excited, though, to see Adam Fantilli's development because he missed the last few, I think, last two months of the season with a lower body injury, I believe it was. 
So I'm excited to see him on the ice. And this team, unfortunately, like we just talked about, will not be making the playoffs. They're going to be a lottery team. Um, I'm hoping that they get the first overall pick. They deserve it for they, all the shit they've had to go through the last like, few years. Uh, they get shafted in every year in the draft lottery. Just, just get it. Just please. I'm praying. Like, they've yeah, gotten, no, they, 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 they just, like last year, San Jose deserved the number one old pick. The Blue Jackets. It's it, their time. They, they've been, it's been a rough few years for them, and they, they deserve at least one win. So the teams with one of the most turnover in the entire offseason, the New Jersey Devils. The record last season was 38, 39, and 5 for 81 points. They finished seventh in the Metro Division. Their key additions were Jacob Markstrom, Paul Cotter, Brad Pesci, Brendan Dillon, Stefan Nosen, and Tomas Tatar. Their key subtractions, Kevin Ball, Alex Holtz, Akir Schmid, Capo Kakinen, Tomas Nosek, Cal Foote, Brendan Smith, and John Marino. When you look at that, just from the base standpoint, they got rid of some guys that were, they got rid of most of their guys, actually not. All of them, all of those guys were depth players or like bottom six, bottom two pairing guys. And back I mean, Holtz was a pretty highly touted prospect. I mean, he was, point. but he was buried, really unfortunately. He fit in there. Yeah. Then you look at the guys they brought in. Jacob Markstrom, it's an upgrade. Paul Cotter was good in Vegas, upgrade. Brad Pesci, upgrade. Brendan Nillen, upgrade. Stefan Nosen, a great, what, bottom six guy. Yeah. Masatar, same. So they brought, they upgraded their positions, got rid of guys that are good, but they're, they also can do better. So they did that in the offseason. And props to Fitzgerald for going out and finally mm-hmm. addressing goaltending. Yeah, I don't know why he waited so long yeah. to address it because they, they had to deal with a lot of injuries last year to some of their star players, like Heischer, Hughes, Meyer missed some time as well. Yeah. Correct, you know, I believe Dougie Hamilton missed almost all of last season. Basically like six months. Also, they had probably the second worst goaltending in the league behind Ottawa. They, they, it was unbearable. It was it, it, like. It was Vanacek and and Schmied. They ended up moving them at the deadline. Now they, have, I think, one of they have one of the stronger tandems in the league. One of the older ones, but they have you know Jacob Markstrom, who I think will immediately make this team back into playoff contention just by him being on that roster. And then they have a, a solid lot backup in Jake Allen, one of the better backups in the league in my opinion. So you go from having one of the worst, if not the worst, goaltending tandem in the league to one of the better ones. It's like it's not going to set the world on fire, but all this team needed was a goalie they could rely on just a little bit not not it's like okay well if we let the other team get 30 shots on net tonight they're probably going to score three or four goals so shit we need to keep shooting Keith is going to do some special things with this roster by the way i do love they're going to score a lot of goals i do love nico he jack hughes eric hollow and then you have curtis lazar down the middle i do like that their top six like, there they're, is good. I Now, Andre Pilat, according to Daily Faceoff, is on the first uh, line. Yeah, I don't know about no. that. Um, you're probably going to throw Timo Meyer up there. But Dawson Mercer, I believe he just re-signed with the Devils. Mm-hmm. I really like that for the Devils. Good for both parties, by the way. Jesper Bratt is going to put up a point per game. Nico Heaster is going to be a good two-way guy. Jack Hughes is going to be in the hard conversation. I expect him to at least. I am so high. On I this think dude. we'll have over 100. I think this year. is going to be his best season, and it might not even be close. I have Jack Hughes getting like 115, 120 points at that. I mean, top five in hard. I mean, voting. he was on track to have a great season last year, and the injuries kind of derailed that. And he, he got hurt real, about 25 he, times. He had a, so. he had a, yeah, he had a great start to last season. I mean, that was the big storyline for the year. Can you uh, go down to their defensive? I yes. really, I really like this defensive group they're building. You know, Siegenthaler, I think, is one of the more underrated defensemen in the league. Dougie Hamilton, I don't think people realized how big of a hit him not being there last year was on this team. Not only is he probably their best defenseman, he's also a leader, one of the few veterans they had on the— because this was a very young team. They've gotten a bit older this offseason, but they were a very young and experienced team. You know, Dougie Hamilton's seen just about everything you can see in the league, and him just not being there it hurts a lot. Luke Hughes is going to be a stud. I mean, I thought he had a great rookie year. He's not going to be asked to log a lot of big minutes this year, like super high-end situations, because they will have Dougie Hamilton back. And I think having Brett Pesci, if they do end up playing out a pair together, I think that will be tremendous in helping his development. You know, and then Brendan Dillon, Simon Nemich. Nemich is another very young defenseman. You know, get him on that third pair with a, a, a veteran like Brendan Dillon. I think the sky's... I, I really like his defensive core. And I think, I mean... Yeah, I think the sky's the limit for this team. I, I love their four core. However, though, I think where they're going to excel is defense. Nobody talks about everybody about their defense. Everybody talks about Jack Hughes, Nico Hughes, Jesper Brett, etc. But like you said, Dougie Hamilton missing last season, 
Luke Hughes got thrust into a defenseman in one and row, And I thought basically. he did well. He did well, but, like... Like, he, he showed... Did, he had his rookie moments here there and were, there. There were some, like, you comments from Lindy Ruff when he was the coach at the time. Like, you, he knew that Luke Hughes was going through rookie um, moments. But it's and normal. It, it's, it happens, and, like, he even... He stated in press conferences here and there about, like, they don't have a certified number one guy, and Luke Hughes did a fine job. You, you had Simone Nemich on the power play, too, if I'm not mistaken, at the time. And now you can have really Luke Hughes on the power play too, or if something happens, like or you can rotate both of them between Simon Simone Nemich and Luke Hughes between power play two, whatever you want to do. But I'm assuming it's going to be Luke Hughes 99 percent of the time. And you get Dougie Hamilton back, who can do everything. He can play lockdown defense if you ask him to. He can be a great puck moving defenseman, which is what he is. Um, he can provide that offensive spark and. It's crazy because Simone Nemich and Brendan Dillon on the third line will be a second pair on most teams in the league. I mean, which Nemich is, is very young, too. Like, Luke Hughes just played his rookie year. Simon Nemich, I think, was what, drafted in, like, 2020, 2021? Yeah, 2021. Yeah, Something but, like that. Like, these are two, like, really good young defensemen. I, like, I think Luke Hughes can end up being maybe, like, like a top 10 defenseman in the league Oh, at some yeah, point. it's the potential. I mean... But this team's going to be really exciting. They're, they're, I think they're going to be good for a while. And I think it would be the funniest thing ever. And, you know, Sheldon Keefe, first year in New Jersey, gets them to the second <laughs> round of the playoffs, and Toronto loses in the first round again because they can't say it was his fault be, anymore. No, right? it, would be, it would be pretty obvious it was the roster construction and big four. And... I, this, this, I really like this Devils team, and I think they're going to be a really dangerous team. I think they're going to be a really fun team to I'm watch. I'm going to ask you this because I already know my answer to it. Are you looking at this Devils team and saying they have President's Trophy or Cup potential at the moment, or do we have to see them play? I and- think there will be some growing pains. I think they're going to play a very different system with Sheldon Keefe than they have with Lindy Ruff. Lindy Ruff's more the defensive coach. I think Keefe is kind of kind of let the floodgates loose and let their offense shine. Let Jack Hughes be super creative with the puck. Let Timo Meyer do more in the offensive zone. Now, they're still going to have to be responsible in the defensive zone, especially with two younger defensemen with Hughes and Nemich. But you have those veteran goalies now. You can rely on them a little bit more to bail you out here and there. It's not like you have Schmied, you have Schmied and Vanacek anymore. So um, I wouldn't put him in the President's Trophy conversation right now. You know, maybe in a couple months and like they have a really great start to the year, we could talk then. But right now, I, I need to see them on the ice first. President's Trophy for the New Jersey. I actually have them second. I think I have one other team that I'm not going to say now in the President's Trophy. Yeah, I... I think this team is not cup or bust, but I think they have that cup potential. And I, I don't think it's cup or bust no. now. I think like a good year for them would be making the second round of the get playoffs. Get to the second round, get to the third round, whatever you get, it is. You get and these younger players some more playoff experience. I think them making the second round a couple of years ago was huge for them. It's, you know, Last year was a disappointing year, but I think almost everything could, could have gone wrong. I mean, for them they were wrong. playing with AHL players half the year. Yeah, no, it, was, it, was a, it was a rough year for the yeah. Devils, but I, I fully expect them to be a playoff team this year. The next team, the New York Islanders. Their record last season was 39-27-16 and 16 for 94 points. They finished third in the Metro Division some fucking how. Uh, their key additions are Anthony Duclair, key subtractions, Matt Martin, Cal Clutterbuck, and Robert Bertuzzo. Really didn't do much in the offseason. This is another intriguing team to me because every season it's like, okay, they when, don't go away, yeah. when are the Islanders done? They, Like you said, they just don't go away. I really like them adding Anthony Duclair, and they really didn't give up much either. Their lines are Anthony Duclair, Bo Horvat, Matthew Barzell was a good first line, second line. Um, I can't even pronounce yeah, that left that. winger. I'm not gonna um, try Maxim T. That's what yeah, call Maxim. Um, Brock Nelson and Kyle Palmieri. They don't. Brock have... Nelson was awesome last year. And Anders Lee too. Yeah. Didn't I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, um, both of them had 25 plus goals. I could be wrong on that, but I'm almost 100 percent certain they had very underrated season for them. But where this team thrives is their defense and their goaltending. Varlamov, Loki, kind of outplayed. Sorokin down Sorokin the had a rough year last year. It, it's Sorokin will bounce back. I wouldn't worry about him. But with Roy, I guess Patrick Waugh behind the bench, Matthew Barzell had a much better season. He's going to put up, I'm expecting, 85 points I'm from the season. I'm excited to see season. Matt Barzell let loose because for every year of his career, except for last year, he's had defensive minded coaches. I mean, Barry Trotz, you listen to Barry Trotz. Like, yeah. He's seen it all, he's done it all. He, when he tells you to do something, you listen to him. But now. I think Patrick Waugh is going to let this team play way more loose. I mean, he's going to let he's going to yell at him when he needs to. He's kind of a psychopath. He's but. a good coach. Oh, is he a good coach? I think he's a good coach. I mean, at least at least like he knows he's hockey. More, he he knows he does know hockey. I don't know much about Waugh's resume. 
Um, but I will say, though, Matthew Bazar- Barzal has come out and said that he loves playing for Patrick Wah. And I believe it was some point when he got hired in January last season where ba- Barzal just flew. Like, he took off. It was almost like Patrick Wah told him, I think just people go forget play how game. good Bar- Barzal is one of the fastest players in the league. And, like, he'll show it every once in a while. But that system he was playing in was really holding him back. They were asking everyone to contribute to playing defense. Mm-hmm. And that works. Like, that's why they are a playoff team almost every year because... They're the kind of team that's comfortable playing and like leading by a goal for fifty percent over half the game, and they feel very because they have the goaltending to do it. You know, it was Varlamov and uh, Sorokin. They have a really strong defensive core. You know, Alexander Romanov, Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson, I thought, had a great, great breakout year last year. You know, Adam Pellick, Ryan Pollock, and then Mike Riley, Scott Mayfield, bottom pair. You know, but yeah, this team is a team that just doesn't go away. You know, I think Duclair was a good, good addition. I, I still, th- they're still in that wild con conversation for me. You know, I'm anticipating, you know, the Devils are going to jump back into that top three in the Metro, so that might push them out of that top three spot because that was the case last year. It was pretty much the Hurricanes and the Rangers than everybody else. I have a hot take for a team later in the Metro division that could surprise a lot of people. Okay, I have a feeling I know what that team is. But, I um, think. <laughs> yeah, well, the Islanders, they're, 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 they're right in, like, that wild card spot. Yeah. Um. They're kind of, I don't really expect them to do anything in the playoffs. Could they surprise a team and maybe like upset someone in the first round? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, especially if Patrick Waugh really lets his team to start playing loose and having more fun, playing with more speed, more offense. I think this is what that team needs. Like, just oh, yeah, like they, you yeah, saw with need... their subtractions, like they got rid of their three I can't guys believe Matt were... Martin was still in the league. The dude's just a goon. And like they got rid of those three guys that were their fourth liners that would go out there and just cause some havoc like in the defensive zone whatever Take maybe. stupid penalties and, and right yeah They'll play like seven minutes a game and it feels like this team is going to lean more towards kind of its fastest style of play i don't let know bar, let bar let barzell cook like let, he can have a hundred plus yeah. point season like he is that good he's so freaking fast Just let let him loose playing with a guy like horvat and duclair too he can do that that's a good first line i do really like that all right so this is going to be the first controversial one of the episode Playoffs or no playoffs? See, this is tough for me because I'm going to lump them in with like a couple other teams that like, it wouldn't surprise me if they made the playoffs. It also wouldn't surprise me if they I'm barely in that same missed boat. it. Right now, I'm going to say yes. I think they are a wild card team. I think they can get that wild card one or two slot. You know, if maybe a team like the Rangers or the Hurricanes underperform, maybe they can sneak into that top three in the Metro again. I don't see it happening, but. This team is going to be in the mid- midst of it all season long. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I, I think they'll they're a playoff team. This one I went back on fourth on for about hours on end. I'm being over dramatic. Uh, I don't think they're going to be a playoff team. I think they're going to be in the mix. They're like one of eight teams that are in the playoff bubble. I think they're like. one of the stronger wild card yeah, contenders. Yeah, though. if they if they make the playoffs, like you said, I wouldn't be shocked. But if they miss the playoffs, I wouldn't be shocked. I have them missing by like two points or something. It's going like to be that. close. Either, it's going to yeah. be tough. All right, so we're moving on to the next team, the New York Rangers. They're coming off a great President's Trophy season, underwhelming Eastern Conference Finals. They finished with the 55-23-4 record for 114 points last season. Finished, obviously, first in the Metro Division. Key additions are Riley Smith and key subtractions. Jack Roslovic, Eric Gustafson, Barclay Goudreau, and Alex Wenberg. This is a team to me that had just hasn't gotten better, but it also hasn't gotten worse over the offseason. I mean, you still have a Artemi Panarin who put up 120 points. Career, yeah. yeah, you have Chris Carter's going to put up 40 goals. Mika Zibanejad will be fine. My one concern about this team is they can't rely on the power play so much to win them games. And I give five on five at times. They were really good at scoring. But in the playoffs, they came across that problem of their power play when it struggled. They couldn't score five on five, and it really hindered them. And they relied on Igor Shosturkin too much. And I think Igor Shosturkin, again, top three. Three goalie in the league, at least. Like, I think it's across the board. You could make an argument for number one. They can't rely on him so much and have to provide more five-on-five scoring. More consistently is the key. I know they can at times, but it's just the consistency. You can't have a stretch of games where your five-on-five game looks great, and then the next ten games you guys can't score on five-on-five to save your life, but your power plays at a 40% rate. You can't have that because that doesn't make a successful team. We saw it in the playoffs last season. And, and I that's get, what the Oilers did. 
Yeah, but the Oilers have Connor fucking McDavid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Rangers have a very good but top six. But I, I, love the, I love the Rangers' top six, and it's one of the best in the league. Trocek had a great year. Last friend year I have getting 75 points this season. But, like, you have Connor McDavid on the Oilers, and he's still, he can put up five-on-five five numbers and his sleep still. Yeah, I know, but that power play is what carried them to the Stanley Cup final. But last they were year. still able to score five on five. That's yeah, what I'm trying to get. Yeah, but their power play was historic. I, I'm a, in the I, I'm a, they're at like a 35, 40 percent clip. I'm aware of that. <laughs> but you, they can still score five on five in the Stanley Cup yeah, finals. They were able to. It was pretty much if you get a penalty against the Oilers, they're going to score. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, and we saw it that the Rangers couldn't do that in the playoffs, which is why they struggled because they didn't have something to fall back on. Now I will say, in the start of the Stanley Cup finals, when the Oilers went down three zero. When the power play was getting shut down by Florida, they did struggle to score five on five, which is why they went down three out besides facing Sergei Bobrovsky. But when they found their power play back, it felt like they were playing more looser in the games four to six. Anyways, back to the Rangers. Yeah, that, that is one, my one concern about the Rangers. However, though, this team's still going to be good. I don't get a lot of people expecting them to disappoint us this season because they're still going to be top two in the Metro. Probably, yeah. They're top, on the President's Trophy conversation. Uh, still, I don't, I don't care because you, as long as you're riding with Igor Shosturkin and their blue line really is still very, very good with Ryan Lindgren, Adam Fox. Great pair for them. Adam Fox being injured in the conference final hurt a lot. I'm, I'm not convinced of this, but I'm almost certain that if Adam Fox doesn't get that knee to knee or leg to leg hit against the Capitals, that this team has at least, say, did they, how long was the series against the Panthers? Was it? Six, five. Six games. I think that goes to seven games. Adam Fox being on one leg killed them. Oh, he did not look like himself. No, not he, at all. He was not. He wasn't being productive, yeah. and people were killing him for it. And speaking of people that were getting killed in the playoffs, Jacob Truba is on the second pair. I didn't get the hate from Jacob Truba. Rangers fans wanted him. Gun. Rangers fans, let me know in the comment section below. I get Jacob True, but you guys don't like him at least in the playoffs. Let me the know. The problem was, I think they get they matter how much money he makes. I don't feel like he lives up to it. I mean, he kind of doesn't though. What eight million dollar cap hit that he has? I mean, he, he did try to like fucking torpedo somebody. That was kind of. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he <laughs> was... get a concussion. Of that. <laughs> Never said to launch their body like that. That was, I will say, that was a funny clip. DeAndre Miller is playing with Jacob Truba, who is a human fucking missile. Um, and then Zach Jones and Braden Schneider. I really like Braden Schneider. I thought he played well for them last season. He has a lot of upside. This team, again, is, is good. I like him. And it's going to ride on Igor Shosturkin's shoulders and pay Igor whatever he wants. Yeah, that's, I mean, I know a lot of Rangers fans are really upset with like them. that They didn't really do much in free agency. They just pretty much bought in, uh, Riley Smith in a trade with Pittsburgh, which, Pittsburgh, which is kind of just a cap yeah. dump. They have to save their money because they, they, they have to pay Igor next year. Oh, my God. Drew, Drury, Drury knows that. Well, they don't sign him. He's fired. Oh, my God, dude. If he's fired, he better get it. If he gets the open market, I don't even want to know how much he's going to get. Listen, okay, I don't want to think about it because the Rangers are going to keep Igor Shosturkin by any means. I'm confident they'll get something done. But if for some reason Igor hits the open market and he's not back in Madison Square Garden at the start of the 2025-26 season, Chris Drury might not end up alive out of New York. I I wish I was Well, they also have to pay Lafreniere pretty soon, too, so he's going to get a big boy contract soon he's on a bridge deal right now i think what a two or two year deal three year deal something like that yeah so i mean they gotta start being smart with their money and i mean you already have money going to your big guns like Kreider, sabanajad panarin i mean they're um, worth the money i mean i think sabanajad sure. kind of disappeared in the playoffs last year that, that's been the story for this team is when I, it matters the most the big guns just disappear i don't know if this okay again i i don't know if this is true but i think um mika sabanajad was playing with some sort of Upper body injury. I mean, you could tell injury. he was horrible in the conference final. He was not. He was not good. Although it felt like when one star would appear, the other ones wouldn't. Um, but yeah, this except team, for Shosturkin, that dude always shows up. Shosturkin stole them the against pl- Carolina in, in the playoffs. Like that dude, I don't, I don't think I've seen him have a bad game in the playoffs. And, it feels like he, he's yeah. just on top of his game. So this team, playoff team, President's Trophy conversation, yes. of course. Yeah, they're, they're going to be one of the best teams in the league next year. Moving on to another playoff bubble team, the Philadelphia Flyers. Their record last season was 38-33-11 and 11 for 87 points. Finished sixth in the Metro Division. They did not add anybody in the offseason. And their key subtractions, Cam Atkinson, Dennis Giryanov, and Mark Saul, who did retire a few days ago. So happy retirement to Mark Saul. Hopefully everything goes well for you. A long career. Yeah, very long career. So, on the Philadelphia Flyers, and I'm not going to talk about the negative about them being first in the Metro and completely collapsing. I'm going to talk about the positive 
because this team has a very young team that do have some mix of young vets. Props to connect me for getting that long contract extension of seven years. He's earned it. Um, but then you have guys like Sean Kateria, you have Matt Bay Michkov, who is going to be a Calder finalist for sure. Yeah, he should be stepping in the league and be great day one. I, I would be excited. This fight, like him coming to the Flyers this early out of the cage show is changes my stance on the flyers now not the from now i don't think it really moves the needle team. that much you, for me i think it kind of does i do meech can if he can stand the ice for 75 80 games he's going to put up 60 points 63 points i i think the thing with the flyers is last year i think we could both agree they overperformed oh for sure like they they were playing out of their mind most of the year and you know at the end of the season they ran out of gas magic kind of ran out goaltending didn't help them, you know, that whole situation. With, that um, was the demise of the Flyers last season. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a great situation. Um, now they're, you know, they thought they had finally had their goaltending situation settled, and then all of a sudden he's gone, and they got to figure it out, out again. I think that did hurt, not having really, really consistent goaltending next year. But, you know, I think Danny Barriere has a plan, and I think part of his plan is to not be that great this year. I don't think, I, I don't see the Flyers being in the playoff conversation. I feel, They'll, I do think they'll take a step back. You know, Michkov stepping in that lineup will will be great. I, you know, it's good for Philly to get a taste of what's to come. Because I do think, you know, when Breer has his plan, I think the Flyers will be very good. It's just, it's, it's, this is part of the growing pains. You're going to have years like last year where you overperform. And then, you know, let's be honest, if they made the playoffs last year, they would have gotten annihilated. By anybody. Yeah. But um, just like the Capitals got annihilated. Oh, I think the Flyers would have put up a better fight. They would have played harder, but they weren't winning. I don't, I'd be shocked if they won a game. I think they would have won a game. I don't think they would have won the series, obviously. But no, I, but I, um, <laughs> they're a really tough team to play against. Very physical team. You know, they got Tortorella coach, a veteran coach. He's hard on them. Um, that's the one thing that I might hold back Michkov a little bit is, you know, I think Tortorella is he, he's notoriously hard on rookies. You have to, he, you really have to earn his trust. He wants you out there in big situations, and he Tortorella's an old school coach. He holds all of his players accountable, like his captain. That's what that's he what benching him last year. That's what some teams need though. Now benching a captain is something else, although like you have to hold players accountable. You can't just have a free pass. That's how you lose a locker room fast. So maybe it was a good coaching move, but a guy like Mitchkoff, young players like you need to like John Tortorella isn't a hard coach because he wants to be a dick. He's a hard coach. He's gonna bring the he best ca- out of you. He cares. Yeah, he's not just like yelling at you to yell at you. He he does care, and you know I think most players that played for him, you know, they put up with a lot of bullshit. But at the end of the day, they like, yeah, I'd, I'd run through a wall. There's for this there's man. play like we've seen players come out and talk about playing for John Tortorella. They love the guy. They love him as a human, as a coach. Like they're like, sure, you know, you've gotten bitched at, called names and everything, but it's because he cares. There's some coaches like Babcock who yell at you because he's a fucking dick. Yeah, he's, I'm not he's gonna a get bully. into that. Yeah, right. He's just a bully. You exactly. Know, Tortorella, Tortorella, like I said, I, I think we had, we had this conversation a few months ago. He's a Hall of Fame coach, oh, in my opinion. Oh, for sure. I think he's one of the, the better coaches in NHL history. So he's gonna get the most out of this group, no matter what. Um, you know, they could overperform again and be in that playoff conversation. I, I don't see them, you know, being a playoff team. Um, like I said, they're still really young. This is part of the plan. Year, like this, I'm sure Philly fans are I, used to this with trust the process with the, the 76ers. That went really well. So, oh, yeah, look at them go. I mean, they got Joel and B, he's pretty good. That's MVP, and that's that's it. Um, yeah, with the Flyers, I think your best bet is uh, be bad, but at the same time, I don't they're think they're not gonna this be bad, team... like, they're not gonna be like a bottom feeder, like, they're, they're gonna be average, but this... I don't see them really contending they're gonna, for a playoff they're, spot. They're, they're gonna contend for a playoff spot. I'm telling you this right now. They might not. They might not be in it for like an entire eighty, eighty-two game season. But I think they'll be in it at least past the trade deadline. So I'm not gonna predict anything. I'm not gonna say anything. But I think this team will just be a few points out of the playoff. At not the, at the playoffs. At the trade deadline. If the playoff line is ninety-four points in the East, this team is probably gonna be at eighty-nine points. I think eighty-seven. I think their ceiling is eighty-nine to ninety points. Um, I don't even know what their floor is. Probably 80 points, 82 points is at the absolute worst. Um, so obviously you stated no playoffs for yeah, this right, team. I don't, think they're, I don't team. think they're a playoff team either. I think they're close, but not quite there. Moving on here to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Their record last season was 38, 32, and 12 for 88 points. They finished fifth in the Metro Division. Key additions, Blake Lazat, Kevin Hayes, 
Anthony Beauvillier, and Matt Grizzlick. Key subtractions, Jeff Carter and Pierre Oliver Joseph. This is a team that's stuck in no man's land. Obviously, you have Sidney Crosby, who's going to put up elite numbers. It seems like he's defeating Father Time, knock on wood. This team up and down, like outside of a few guys, does not have a ton of depth. It feels like this team is going to be mid. Um, I'm not going to keep saying negative things about them, but like you have Sidney Crosby. You're always going to be in contention. I think this team's going to hover around the playoff bubble. I don't know if they're quite a playoff team. I, I don't think they But, are. I mean, I think Matt Jari will be. Did I just say Matt Jari? Tristan Jari, Tristan excuse Jari. me. Um, I think he'll. I think he'll play fine. I don't think he's going to play great, but I think he'll play fine. I do really like the addition of Michael Bunting that added in the Jake Ensel trade last what, season. What I is? Like, what is? Uh, what what the fuck's the GM's name? I can't remember. Um, is it? It's Dubis. What is his? Like he loves my fun. Like there's a few players <laughs> like he just loves, and he'll bring him in wherever he goes. Like well, Achari brought him, brought him the Pittsburgh from Toronto. Because Michael Bunting, who played under him in Toronto. Yeah, but, I mean, he's, he's an okay bottom six Michael, player. No, bottom six is, no, he's a second-line player. He Bunting? played good, yes, he played good for, he played good for them last season down the stretch. Okay. He, all right? Um, but then you have Michael Bunting playing with Malkin and Rucker McGrody. By the way, I didn't mention Rucker under um, key additions because, A, this was before the trade that I did the list, and, B, because... Prospects, I didn't really add in. I, mean, I, I do more. like that pickup for Pittsburgh. Yeah, they got the better player. I, um, I think it helps them now. I know that who know who knows what ends up the player they traded away the being, but you know, like I think McCourty will play in the NHL this year, and they needed a young player with a low cap hit to play. And if he can contribute right away, yeah. I mean, they they were one of the teams that can't afford for a guy like Braden Yeager to sit around in a year or no, two. No, they're, they're to definitely and... trying to, as long as you have Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin, you're going to try to win now. Speaking of Sidney Crosby, okay, I'm going to bring up something that you Pittsburgh Penguins might not like. Elliot Freeman reported on 32 Thoughts Podcast that Sidney Crosby might, I'm going to say might with an asterisk on it and in bold print because it's a might, that he might end up not resigning with Pittsburgh and he might end up wanting to go to a contender. And the only reason I'm stating this is because it's from the man himself, Elliot Friedman. And a month ago, it was reported that Sidney Crosby wanted an extension done by his birthday in the first week of August. Never happened, obviously. So now there's question marks left and right about what Sidney Crosby going to do in Pittsburgh. I mean, I think that's a valid question for Pittsburgh because, you know, as long as you have Crosby, you're going to try to build a contending. Because, you mm-hmm. know, you have one of the best players of all time in your team. You want to win when you're there. And I, I think they're thinking, like, okay, we re-signed Crosby, like, a two- or three-year deal. Do we think we can contend for that much longer? They need to start getting younger. You know, Malkin's not getting any younger. Chris Letang's not getting any younger. They, don't, they need to find a, a better long-term solution for goaltending. I think Jari's the guy. They're, like you said, they're in no man's land right now. And you, when you commit to Andy Crosby, you're committing to being an excellent team in the league. And I don't know if they can provide the tools that Crosby needs to be contending. Yeah, I don't know what you do with Crosby because there's going to be two the things The easy answer happen. is, yes, you're sitting Crosby. You get whatever you want. Yeah. But you have to think long term. This is what I'm thinking. Okay, there's going to be two things that happen. If there's reports that saying Crosby doesn't want to stay in Pittsburgh. I mean, I are, think, I still don't think there's a chance he leaves. But I think, I think there's a higher percent chance that he stays in Pittsburgh than leaves. He's expressed interest that he wants to be in Pittsburgh no matter what. Anyways. So there's two things that happen. If he is made available at the trade deadline, you're not going to get a ton back for him because he's going to hit the open market and don't have to give up any assets to get if him. If Sidney Crosby was available on the trade deadline this year, they would get a lot for him. They would get a lot for him. They're... Okay, now that just basically rebuttal my entire statement because what I was going to say was that people would be like, we'll just wait for him in the open market. But you are right. They you, won't you get a lot. You don't think if like a contending team saw Chris, Sidney Crosby available with the trade done, and if Pittsburgh was like willing to eat some of the salary cap, they wouldn't give up. That's an what arm I did. That's, that's what him. I. That's what I didn't yeah. think of. I was <laughs> yeah. like, what if a team that needs somebody to get over the hump is like, you know what, let's or, go. Or like, what if like a team like you know a team I would think Crosby would great on is a team with like Colorado. Him playing with Nathan McKinnon, I think. Put him be, on New Jersey. No, New Jersey yes. wouldn't trade for him. They no, they trade. wouldn't trade for the assets. Traded. But I'm like re-signing if he hits open. I'm talking about if. This is a stupid conversation anyway. They're not going to no, trade Sidney no. Crosby. They're not going to trade him. Why, so this is a dumb conversation. I'm sure you guys are flaming us in the comments right now. 
So, like, yeah, we are idiots. So you can call us idiots. They're not trading Cindy there's Crosby. Some, there's some. There's some Pittsburgh fan in the comments. Don't believe what Ilya Friedman, idiot Friedman, has said. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, he is like, yeah, he's like a B. He's like a D or T. Uh, I can't talk. Uh, he, he's like, he's yeah, he's one of the worst insiders in the league. Yeah, he doesn't know anything. You're right. He is an idiot. Um, but yeah, no. But Sid, if Sidney Crosby somehow was available at the trade deadline, I think that might be the biggest return any team would ever get for a player at the trade deadline. In NHL history. Yes, because he's still great. And if, a te- if they're willing to eat some of that contract, you don't think teams would be willing to give up multiple for us? But just to get Sidney Crosby, and this, if it works out, they would, can resign it would, him. It would be some NBA trade to give up three first plus another couple players. You're getting Sidney Crosby, though, and you can win. If, like, a, like a contending team can add him to that team. They can, if they win the cup, who cares? You know what would be nuts? Like you brought up Colorado. If Colorado goes out and is like, We'll give you an arm and a fucking leg for Sidney Crosby. Oh, look at that. Crosby and McKinnon are on the same power play unit that together. That would be so fun to watch. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be on Team Canada together in the Olympics, but. Oh, and on top of it, you had Kel McCarr power playing the quarterback with Miko and Ranton. <laughs> We're crazy. Don't listen to us. Oh, my but God. I think I, th- I would love to see Sidney Crosby in Colorado with Nathan McKinnon. My, my brother is listening to this right now. He's probably. He probably already fucking texted me and told me to go fuck myself at this point. <laughs> He's a Penguins fan, by the way. Uh, do we have them making the playoffs? No. I, I have them barely missing out. The last team, the Washington Capitals, who also had a lot of turnaround this offseason. Yes. The record last season, 40, 31, and 11 for 91 points. They finished fourth in the Metro Division. He additions Pierre-Luc Dubois, Andrew Mangiapani, Logan Thompson, Brandon Duhame, Jacob Chikrin, Taylor Radish, and Matt Roy. Skeet subtractions. Nick Jensen, Nicholas Abe Kubel, and Darcy Kemper. They got so much better. I get they overperformed last season, but they got so much better this offseason. I cannot stress it enough. I mean, yeah, but right now they're over the salary cap, though. So. Yeah, but I, but I think they're over the salary cap by, what, 10 yeah, million, I something mean, like that? Is TJ Oshie going to play this year? Uh, he is not expected to really. So, okay, they'll probably put him on LTIR. Yeah. Then, that'll probably clear up the cap space. Yeah. Yeah, he's there. There, obviously, with Backstrom, who's still on LTIR, I believe. Well, yeah, Backstrom's yeah. done. But listen, okay, I know I teased it earlier in the episode that I had a team yeah, that I was right. could get third in the Metro <laughs> if the Devils don't live up to the height. It is the Washington Capitals. Come on. Like, how do you look at this team and you're like, this team is not playoff material? I think how do they you- got better. I mean, you got old man OV still. Uh, you know, I love Dylan Strom. I hope he continues to be the one C. I, I, I put him at the one C over Pierre Dubois, just because Dylan Strom was great for them last year. Oh, he season. was a big reason why they made the playoffs last year, and he also was a big player on my fantasy team that I won the championship. Love in, it. So, but um, you know, this is a team. I think a little, it's similar to Pittsburgh, but in a little bit of a better situation than Pittsburgh. Because they they don't have that many players they're super cap strapped to like Sidney Crosby, Kenny Malk, and Chris Letang. They they've OV, and but that's, uh, I mean I hate the Tom Wilson contract, but you know he's a lot younger than mm-hmm. Crosby, Malkin, and and he's only Letang. thirty thirty one years old. And then also um, John Carlson, but he's still a good defenseman in my opinion. So it's not like that's a bad contract. It's not like he's falling off a cliff. I mean he's slowly declining, but that just happens with age. He's, yeah, he's fine for them still. He's I still... mean, but I, this is Washington me saying we have one or two years left with Ovechkin. Like we're gonna go all out and try to win while he's still here, or try to surround him with the best supporting cast as possible to get him win Gretzky's record. This team is going to revolve. Obviously, it revolves around Ovechkin. This team's X factor, and I don't think there's a bigger X factor in the league, is Pierre Luc Dubois on this team. If Pierre Luc Dubois plays like the number two center, he's going to be asked to play. This team is a playoff team. They're going. They're they're my wild card team. I, I just don't get Pierre Luc Dubois because how many chances do you have to get to prove? It's not a skill issue. We know how good he is. He prove he can he can show it on the ice. It's a character issue. And how many times do you have to get told like this is your last chance or you're done? Because this is his last chance because no one's trading for this contract again. If he goes to Washington and he plays like he did in L.A. last year, I, I, he, they might actually try to buy out the contract. The talent is there. It's Can just you? a character thing. Like you, you got to want it, man. You got the contract you wanted. You're, you, you, know, you got traded to, uh, last year to L.A., a team where you wanted to be. They give you the contract they want. You're playing top six minutes. Like you could potentially be a top-line center. It goes horribly wrong. You have players like Dowdy openly calling you out 
against a bad team and against the Buffalo Sabres. You go to you go to a team like Washington with another very well established leader in Alex Ovechkin. If he starts calling him out, you're done. You're, you're done. Ovi doesn't call anybody out. Yeah, no. Like if you if you go into the locker room, you don't listen to Ellis Ovechkin. I don't know what to tell you, man. All right, Pierre Luc Dubois, listen to me closely, okay? I'm sure if he's you, listening right now. So, <laughs> if you get if you play a number two center role, you guys will end up in the playoffs. If you don't, if you put up 35 points again, your ass is going to be homeless. Okay, I don't know about homeless because that well, he's not going to be homeless. He's, he's getting that contract no matter yeah, what. That's true. I mean, <laughs> NHL contracts are fully guaranteed, so he should shit buy me out. Shit, buy him out. It's still getting paid to sit on the couch. You know what? I don't get. I don't get another contract. His team will give him another chance because he was a top three pick. He, he's proven that he can yeah, be great. I, I mean, th- this is what is horrible too. If Pierre Luc Dubois is anything outside of a top 10, 15 pick, I mean, he's not on a team right now. But he he shows flashes of like he was greatness. good his first couple of years. Well, in too. Columbus he was great, and then he just quit on for the no team. reason. The second they started to like, get bad. After I saw him like his last shift in Columbus, where he was just coasting. Like, uh, why would any team want that? Uh, why would I want? Even if you're in a bad situation, you try, dude. If if I if I was on a team, good, bad, great team, whatever, maybe, you're, and I see my teammate coasting around like that while the puck's in front of them, I'm taking my stick and I'm fucking slashing. Because you know, in the face. you know, I get you're you're not where you want to be. You know, Columbus was clearly he didn't want to be there long term. He saw the writing on the wall. He knew the team was going to take a step back. Mm. He wanted to be traded. He made it very open. Okay, fine. You're still getting paid millions of dollars to play a game. Just go out and at least put in some kind of effort. Especially the ball through that when John Tortorella is still the coacher. That is insane. John Tortorella would beat the fuck out of you. And I'm sure he did. Not literally. I'm telling you. I, mean, I'm, I doubt Tortorella even said anything to him. You know what? You're right. He probably just. He's like, oh, he doesn't give a shit about him. the game. Would... I don't give a shit about him. Exactly. But that's a good mindset. That's, that's enough talk about Pierre-Luc Dubois. But... I do really like their blue line, though. Their well, blue they line get, got better. They get better. I mean. Chikrin, uh, I'm curious to see how he bounces back from a, a bad stint in Ottawa. It was never really a good fit there. You know, Rasmus Sandin, I think, took a big step forward last season. I think he's still going to keep getting better. I, uh, I really like the addition of Logan Thompson. Uh, I thought he was really good for Vegas in a pinch when they needed him. Because like, there were several situations where he had to stop up and be a goalie. Charlie Lindgren was kind of the, probably the biggest reason why they made the playoffs last year. For sure. Dude, dude kind of played out of his mind out of nowhere. You know, he had a couple of bad games here and there, but for the most part, he, he, he played very well last year. You know, I, th- I like Logan Thompson a lot, I think. I, I liked him a lot when he was in Vegas. I don't think Vegas ever really gave him a fair shot. But, um, you know, he'll get a chance to, you know, win the, the starting goaltending job in, in Washington. If not, he'll be a good backup. Oh, my God. I, I'm looking at this tandem as like a 50-35 split. Well, 32 split, something like that. Maybe a little bit less than that. I, I see this, that. I, I could see this being like a, a complete split. A 40, like yeah. a 40-something, 40 40-something. 40 I mean, yeah. for sure. I mean, you have a starting caliber goaltender and a backup. And, listen, this team is going to surprise a lot of people. Do you have them making the playoffs? I do not. I think they're a bubble team. I think they're around around there with like the Islanders, the Red Wings, like so that I, kind of conversation. And like not all of them are gonna. And I have the Islanders and the Red Wings making the playoffs. So, so like they're gonna miss by like a point or two. Yeah, because I, I think the I think the Islanders and the Red Wings are better than them. This team's gonna make the playoffs. They're gonna be the second the the second wild card team in the East. The first team I said last episode, Tampa Bay Lightning. If the Devils fall off, look for this team to be third in the Metro and upset in the first, second, third, and win the cup. Just kidding. Um, that was a little bit too much. However, though, that is all we have for today's episode. That's going to end it for the Eastern Conference. Join us next week for the Western Conference previews as well. As well, if you guys are on YouTube, subscribe to the notification bell for more content. Join our Discord. The link's down in the description below to talk hockey 24-7 and other things, sports as well. Follow our Instagram. And if you guys are on Spotify and Apple as well, go over to our YouTube, subscribe to the notification bell. We'll see you guys in our next episode.